Welcome to CBS Kilkenny. For the last 154 years, we've developed legendary hurling teams, but this weekend we set our sights on the Leinster Senior Hurling Final. Excitement is building as the final preparations are being made for the Derby Decider. Mr. Clark, CBS Kilkenny has a proud tradition of hurling success, and thankfully the present generation of hurlers maintains that standard. Absolutely, Kevin, yeah, and I suppose, look, over the last number of years, CBS Kilkenny has featured in the business end of the championship uh, right through from under 14 and a half, under 16 and a half and at senior level. I suppose in the last five years the school has been in the happy position of contesting the Leinster final and uh, we're presently the holders of uh, the Corny deal and I suppose having been in the last two All-Ireland finals gives uh, a number of, of our students great experience in terms of, of the big stage. Now, I suppose in terms of, of actually success, uh, we're in, in the happy position as well that we're preparing for the All-Ireland final in the under 16 and a half. And again, we'll be playing uh, another very good uh, hurling nursery there in um, CBS Middleton. So we look forward to the All-Ireland final in the under 16 and a half while also preparing now for the Leinster final next Sunday. What is the atmosphere like in the school in the build-up to the final? I think the atmosphere is, is excellent and, and you know always is and I suppose we're, we're in the happy position where we have a great spirit within the school and I think that's one of the hallmarks of CBS Kilkenny is that there's a great relationship between students and teachers and I think hurling is, is seen as you know the prime sport within the school and uh, thankfully we have a, a huge number of teachers who give up their time very generously in honing the skills of students. We have upwards of 20 teachers who are directly involved in training teams and outside of that the whole staff are extremely generous indirectly in supporting hurling and in supporting the advancement of hurling within the school. And I suppose, you know, the, the, uh, the success of the school on the hurling scene over many, many years is testament to that generosity of spirit of staff. But also I think we're very lucky in that we have a large number of very good clubs who are feeding into the school and we have a, a, a large number of students who are predisposed towards playing hurling and representing the school at the highest level and uh, I suppose you know the, the amount of work that's been done in terms of working with development squads working with uh, hurlers at every level here has generated huge success and we're looking forward with enthusiasm to our final next Sunday and we're hoping for the best outcome. How do you feel about your team's performances leading up to the final? Um, yeah, you have to be reasonably happy with the team's performance. Any day you're in Leinster final, um, you'd have to be happy. I suppose we haven't reached the heights that we reached last year, but still at the same time, any day you're in a final, you would have to be happy, yeah. Do you think that having a team that won the Leinster final last year is a benefit? Uh, I'd hope so. I'd hope that the experience that you know, uh, a lot of lads would have gained from last year will stand to them um, in the Leinster final. I suppose we'll be sending out um, maybe eight players that would have played in the Leinster final last year and yeah you'd really hope that the, that the experience of, of playing last year and also winning last year would be a benefit from uh, Saturday week. Yeah. Do you think you're as well prepared as last year? Um, unfortunately not. Uh, last year we had you know a, a, a kind of I suppose a clear run of injuries and um, this year even at the moment we kind of have five or six lads just carrying niggles and knocks but it's still stopping them from training so it has uh, hampered it a small bit but um, we won't be using it as, as an excuse or anything, you know, we'll still be going in with, a, with what we consider a full team, so we won't be using that as any excuse. Is it hard to still be in the school but not able to play this year? Uh, yeah, it's very hard because um, you see a lot of lads going away early than during school and you wish you were still able to go, and especially after last year losing the final, you love uh, another chance and it's hard to take that. You don't get another chance but you're still in school. How did it feel to win last year? Uh, it was great. It was uh, very rewarding and it felt fantastic because we put in a lot of work all year and to see it pay off was brilliant. And especially after losing Ireland final and the Leinster final the year before, it was uh, special to get something out of it. Would you have any words of advice for the team? Uh, I wouldn't say much. They know exactly what to do themselves. Just go out there and give it everything and the way they can hurl because they're brilliant 
and that's all I say really. Who is the biggest poser? Have to be Paddy Deegan. Uh, Paddy Deegan. Uh, Paddy Deegan. Um, Paddy Deegan. <laughs> yeah, Paddy, definitely. Uh, who has the worst taste in music? Worst taste in music. Darulan. Darulan. Evan Cody. Who is the most intelligent? Darulan. Paul Delahunty. Darulan. Darulan, yeah. I'd say Dar again. Most intelligent academics are hurling ways are. Uh, both. <laughs> Darulin has a fair brain on him for academics and uh, hurling, and I suppose on the hurling field, Paddy Deegan and Lewis Gallen and Robbie Buckley are fairly intelligent players with brilliant awareness like around them. Who's the biggest messer? Paddy Deegan. Dar again. Paddy Deegan again. Uh, who's the worst dress sense? Uh, Paddy Deegan again. Tough one. Uh, I'll say Paddy Deegan again. JP Tracy. Well, I think it's clear we have some colourful characters in this school and we look forward to the match this weekend. I'm Kevin Barrett and thanks for watching.